So good afternoon everybody to our last EDC roundtable of 2011 and 2012. It's been a fantastic year from uh, the perspective of participation and attendance to these roundtables. This is the first year we've had over 12, this is our 12th roundtable of the year. So um, if you count the months in an academic year, we've had more than one each month and it's been fantastic. And um, we've almost had between 17 to 30 individuals each time, so thank you again for committing your time and your lunch hour. Where we'll be providing you lunch, as you can see right now, it's a liquid diet. <laughs> um, the pizza is on its way. The, there was a car accident, and so the delivery person was a little bit uh, delayed. Uh, on that note, we're very, very pleased to welcome Tim Pitchell, Flavio Renan, and some students from the seminar and university teaching to share today um, on the idea of personal learning environments. Tim, thanks. So we're going to begin, but we'll stop when the pizza arrives, and I think there'll be a spot that's quite apropos for that because we have a YouTube video that's a little bit fun, but not something you have to have your full attention devoted to. As much as my name is first on the PowerPoint slides, the only thing first about me will be that I speak first, and after that I'm going to sit down and probably be much more quiet. Uh, my role in this presentation, as it was in the class, is to facilitate learning, and I've been teaming up with Flavia Renault from the library for years, teaching this course, the seminar in university teaching. And this year she did something different with me. She's always supported the class, but she came into our class and talked about uh, something called personal learning environments, which I personally didn't have any experience with. And by the end of her presentation, I had a bit of an epiphany and said, well, I think our students maybe should do this. It was one of those teachable moments. So I'm Tim, and Flavia is over here, and then uh, Moira Goss is here, along with Mary Beth Haley. But our, our third presenter emailed me at 5.30. Uh, she came down with something awful. She also has young children, and they are just uh, petri dishes, and she got it, whatever it was. So let me just take you through a couple of slides while those boxes get open, and um, then I'll put on this YouTube video. Most of us are familiar with course management systems or learning management systems, and as many, although many of us will bemoan the limitations of various incarnations of these tools, I actually like them quite a bit. Uh, they're better than the early 90s when I was making all of my own web pages, and the thing I like about them is that they're always there, they're structured, they're asynchronous, and from year to year I build a course because it's there. In fact, I was asked, will you have a handout? And I said, I don't do paper. Mm -hmm. And the reason I don't do paper is I just lose paper. And so when I started to teach this way, I thought, wow, this is such a structure for me to keep my stuff together. And it helped me learn and think. And of course, it's an intellectual architecture in its own way, notwithstanding the, the shortcomings of it. So the question became, well, how do we take this away from that course focus and the teacher focus to the students? And that's what personal learning environments or personal learning networks are about. So as we turn to the pizza, I'd invite you to take a look at this YouTube video that captures a conversation that is uh, a little farcical, but there's a, a very important message in it if you, if you give it an ear. And I think you can do that while we're having our pizza. It lasts for about uh, four minutes, and so that's a good time for you to get your pizza, get settled back in, and just keep an ear open. But although it's uh, farcical in its uh, presentation and even in the voices, uh, I think if you listen to the dialogue, you're going to hear something about what we might think of as digital natives, having a conversation with someone who just doesn't get it. And I think that too often, the people that just don't get it includes me. <laughs> and in fact, I recently uh, had an appointment with people in residence to say, I'd like to do more with students in residence because I'm 57 this fall and I don't really understand students the same way anymore. And there's a gap there that's not just a di digital divide, it's a cohort divide. And so this is part of me saying, I think we don't understand our students and how they think. Can you help me with the volume? Do you remember where that volume is? It sounded so loud when the room was empty. <laughs> <laughs> Your ears, that's just something that physics of sound, I guess. You're sucking it in. 
would be a good time to help you. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> on the video, on the video itself. Oh, you can do it there, but I, I think we need to really. Different ways. Okay. You see the volume on the bottom right here. Um, Right it's there, full. it's full, yeah. It's full. And so if you right click or you click on the speaker, there we go. Uh, we'll right click on that. I did. Oh, or it's me, I just normal click on There we go. Alright. Alright, maybe a little louder now. Yeah, we're here. I'm getting a little louder. Okay, get ready. Wear some hearing protection. Here we go. I'll take her back. Thank you very much. No. No. Didn't do it. Did you hit a block? I had. There we go. It could still be that. Little boy, I'm good. But what are you doing here? This is not your classroom. Do you know the password to access this room? The password. Could the password be demo? Right, little boy. That is it. But I'm just kidding. Well, I'm Mr. Martin. Hi, Mr. Martin. My name is Stephen. How did you get here, sir? Well, I'm the principal's friend, and he hired me to teach at this school. I see. What are you doing here with all of those papers, sir? I'm scanning all of these notes to upload them to the school's system, so that all of my students can read them on their computers. Sorry, but sounds a little boring. Little boy, all the schools are working on it. This is called e-learning. Uh, it sounds more like eerie thing, but well, you are the teacher. Yes, I'm the teacher, little boy. And you? What are you doing out of your classroom? Well, I was in the computer lab talking to some Latino friends that I met on Facebook. And they were helping me do a project for my Spanish class with Miss Garman. And your teacher didn't ask you to buy a book to learn Spanish? Well, not really. She asked us to practice speaking Spanish. So I'm doing it with my friends on Skype. Skippy? Like the kangaroo? No, sir, is not an animal. Skype is a software application that allows users to make voice calls over the internet. My Latino friends are helping me make a media cast to upload on YouTube and then put in my e-portfolio. E-portfolio? What is that? What about your backpack with all of your books and notebooks? My e-portfolio is my virtual space where I put all of my schoolwork to share with my classmates and other students in different classes and schools around the world. That's why I don't have my schoolwork in my backpack, but in my e-portfolio where Miss Carmen can review and correct it, too. And why doesn't Miss Carmen use the school system with restricted access, so that the students can't copy each other's homework, and she can know exactly how much time you have spent on the computer studying? She does use the school system, but mostly for required tasks like publishing grades and class content that need to be on the system. We don't copy off of each other. We work in groups and she gives us the freedom to develop whatever we want from the assignments she gives us. And she doesn't care how long we are in front of the computer. She cares more about what interests us and how we want to learn. But those systems don't have to do with the school. Do they have the lot go at the school? No, not really, sir. They don't have to do with the school, and they don't have the logo at the school either. But I can personalize them with my picture and with my own style and colors. But why use those systems, if the school provides you with a costly system to help you study? That's true, sir. But I work in my personal learning environment, in which I can incorporate not only schoolwork, but also other things that I like. They are systems that I can use in my normal day-to-day -day life, using YouTube, Facebook, Flickr, and many others. They allow all of my things to exist in the cloud. In the cloud? <laughs> but if you spend all of your time in the clouds, how are you going to learn anything? No, sir. I'm talking about cloud computing. I mean, all of my things are on the net and not in my backpack or notebooks. 
But those things are for computer geniuses. Not necessarily, sir. I'm a digital native. I was born without fear of change. And pressing buttons doesn't scare me. Neither does moving things out of their place. I see, Stephen. Sounds interesting. Maybe you can help me use some of those systems, if it's not too much trouble. But of course, Mr. Martin, I can share some of the things that help and motivate me to learn with you. Okay, boy. Let's go surf to infinity and beyond. Okay, Mr. Martin. Let's go. So you can see the farcical nature of it, but at the same time, what struck me as an educator as I listened is that he said at one point, my teacher doesn't care how much time I spend on a computer. It's whether I'm learning and I'm engaged and I'm in interested. And so, of course, that's what we're always seeking. And it's a double-edged sword. You know, we put someone on Facebook, well, I study procrastination. I know how much time is wasted there. But at the same time, not to put people in environments that they're uh, able to build themselves uh, is missing something. And that's what we're going to talk about this afternoon. So Flavia is going to take over now and talk about personal learning environments. And then we'll see some examples from the class. And we'll go talk a little bit about how we build them and what our considerations. Feel free to interrupt with questions at any time. It's best that you ask the question when you have it. You don't need to save it to the end. There's nothing going on in this room afterwards, so if at one, uh, some people want to stay and talk, we can do that. Uh, it doesn't matter if we get to the end either. We can share all these slides as well. So glad you. Let me just that, that, and that, that. Okay. Um, so, um, just to keep the theme of the personal narrative, I'm going to sort of approach my part in the same way that Tim did, from a personal point of view, rather than get into the theoretical sort of underpinnings of uh, PLEs. So you get a sense of what issues um, that some of the students have struggled with, and I have struggled with myself. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is a, a bit about, to, to contextualize what definition is up here, um, sort of my story. Um, sort of how I met my PLE. And um, so I came across this particular um, definition and I saw, I saw sort of PLEs as I was doing some research. And um, what prompted that research was uh, my own professional development. Um, I had on my laptop a whole bunch of tools that I was using, RefWorks uh, to save sort of citations. They were all scattered, they weren't in one location, so even for work efficiencies, it wasn't, I wasn't satisfied with that approach. I had used uh, mind mapping uh, software for a lot of projects that I was using, so I figured, well, why don't I bring all these tools together using mind mapping software? So at least they're all in one location, and I could see it's, it's sort of like having a table with your tools if you're doing work with your hands, and everything's there in, in one location, and as you get the inspiration, you click on one and the other. I didn't think it was such an elegant solution. So that's what prompted me to go look around. Is there a better way to sort of, for me to uh, develop professionally and use sort of all these tools at my disposal in a very efficient way, in a creative way as well. Um, so like I said, I came across this definition. And um, so it says, a personal learning environment is a facility for an individual to access, aggregate, configure, man manipulate dig digital artifacts um, of their ongoing learning experiences. So what do you think of that definition? Does that clarify what <laughs> a PLE is? Not really. There's some sort of keywords that jump out at you. And what are those? Do you know? um, ongoing learning experience. Yeah, that caught my eye right away. But I wasn't quite getting the facility part. Um, so I explored a little further. And I came across, I love, I'm a visual person, I love diagrams, and I said, wow, this is, I'm getting it. Um, so we have our personal web tools, uh, the personal learning um, and network that uses some of these tools, and then there's something outside here, um, the, the, the personal learning environment that brings all of that together. Um, so it's a combination of many factors, including the tools, and this I thought, as I was reading through this, this has to do with um, the, the people we connect with. So social software tools probably fit into that particular environment. So people are important, uh, artifacts are important, tools are important in this whole thing. So I kept digging a little further and I came across something else. Another diagram. And this got me a little confused. 
So if you look at it, what did they do differently here with this diagram? They reversed it. They reversed it. Okay. So it's it's a very emerging. So the point here is simply to say it's an emerging area. There are no um, there's no consensus in terms of definition. People are exploring. They're finding things. They're sharing. And uh, it, it, it's, it's sort of a thing that's going to evolve with time as institutions are, are using these personal learning environments. As the research is ongoing, um, in fact, in 2010, uh, the first PLE conference was held, I believe, in Barcelona. So it's a fairly emerging area for these personal learning environments. And we're going to see this is going to change. It's going to keep changing. Um, Okay, so what is the nature of PLE? Um, what I did come across, so I, what I did is I, I did a whole list of definitions going through all the literature. And what I, what I found as a commonality is that it's not a concept. Um, it's, a, it's a concept and not a system. And what do we mean by that? So it's evolving. It's a concept that's still evolving. It's theoretical. It's, it's theoretical, it's sort of an idea, okay, a thing that people do. It's not necessarily a tool, it's not neither a tool nor um, a, a, a particular activity. It's sort of a, 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 a mix between, between both and it's, I guess, the output of how a person brings together certain elements. For example, the formal and informal learning. And where does that fit into uh, I guess the bigger question later on that we're going to ask, well, how does that fit into higher education, the informal stuff, bring those two elements together? And um, Anderson, who is very involved in this area of research, uh, says that there's still some work that needs to be done to operationalize this vision, to make it actually into concrete um, uh, fact. And um, vision of lifelong learning environment into a product. So he mentions lifelong learning. Okay, that, that also, I paid attention to that. That <coughs> interests me quite a bit. Um, so I looked and looked and looked. Uh, there's a lot of software out there that allows you to create web pages, but that didn't resonate with me. Um, and I stumbled across a thesis project by Wendy Drexler in 2010. And what she did is she uh, studied grade seven students and actually gave them a tool and allowed them to explore that tool and at the end actually interviewed these students so that they could explain how they learn. And this was fascinating, it just sort of blew me away. So this is one of her students, she taped it, she actually put it on YouTube, and this is part of her thesis. So, enjoy. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have done that, I actually should have gone. Welcome to my personal learning environment. I've been practicing network learning in my seventh grade science class. I spent some time at the beginning of the year learning how to find information online and how to pull it all together on a personal page. As you can see, there's lots of stuff here. Some things, like my Facebook account and the blocks across the top, are not for school. I organized all my schoolwork along the bottom row. Every morning when I come to class, I visit the science agenda to see what we're doing for the day. Sometimes there are videos to watch or other work to do. Other times, I decide what I need to work on next. One day, we played a game called Pocket Tanks, and I used it to learn how to write an official scientific report. That was created on my Google Docs account and published for anyone to see. We have a lot of animals in our science class. I can create a special report to get certified to hold them, but I have to do research first. I find websites and post them to my social bookmarking account. These are some of the sites I found about the leopard gecko. I posted my certification report on my blog. Now I can hold Sarah during class. I also use my blog for reflections about what I did in class for the day. There's so much information on the internet. I use a special note-taking program to help collect information I find on websites. I can clip small bits of text or pictures from different websites and keep them for later. The best part is it keeps track of where I found the information so I can give credit and find what I'm looking for. 
We recently finished a special project about poisonous and venomous creatures. I made a presentation to help other people tell the difference. After learning about a lot of different poisonous and venomous creatures, I decided to do some research on the box jellyfish because I'd seen shows on Discovery Channel and thought it was interesting. I created a digital poster called a Logster. It lets me book text, video, audio recordings, and core graphics all on one page. My teacher says it's important for scientific work to be peer-reviewed, so I emailed a scientist in Australia. I asked her to look at my Globster and let me know if the information is correct. I haven't heard back from her, so I emailed another scientist in the United States. Some of my classmates have already heard back from their experts. Sometimes we use Skype to video conference and ask the scientists questions. I really like learning this way because we get more freedom. It's not like I can choose not to do something, it's just that I can choose how to do it and when to do it. The fact is we have so much freedom that you feel the responsibility just to know that you can go anywhere on the internet and look at anything like Facebook and other social networking sites. It can be distracting, but because there is so much freedom, you have the inclination to be responsible. And once things finally get done, they look really cool. It's not like book work. With technology, everything looks neat, and since our science class is paperless, you hardly ever need a pencil. Grade 7. This is grade 7. Okay, so these are the future, our future university students. Um, uh, I don't know, I felt quite humbled by uh, just the way the student was expressing themselves and, and hitting some of the elements of sort of self-directed learning. Um, so I'm just going to escape. So as we're switching gears, please come have some more pizza. Uh, <laughs> shouldn't sit here by itself. Okay. That, yep. <laughs> so that's fine and dandy. Uh, but uh, our, our, I guess our issue is how do PLEs fit into the higher education setting? And, and so that uh, tool that you just saw is Symbaloo. Okay, and um, I sort of gravitated towards that, uh, be uh, that tool because I'm very visual. And you notice that there are these tiles that you could color code so you can actually conceptually identify different tools, different areas, and you can create all kinds of web mixes. So each of those tiles you can share um, and they could represent your different identities, your identity as a teacher, your identity as a researcher, and have all the tools within one place. Um, and so what we did is uh, we uh, invited students in the seminar and university teaching to explore with Symbolu. And so that what they're going to do is they're going to talk about um, their experiences with their tool, what they've learned, um, the drawbacks, the sort of... Um, the advantages of using this particular uh, environment to do the informal stuff um, and, to, and sort of connect that with what's going on in the media in the course. So right now I'm going to invite... Um, yes. Be yes, before you move on to that with the symbol, can you elaborate on how much time this takes you? It's, uh, it, it didn't take me any, uh, very little time in order. I guess the students will also speak uh, about that. But for me, I found it was one of the easier tools compared to the web page type of software. Um, the, uh, to learn how to it, it, just copy a URL and paste it here and it becomes one tile, um, is, it, it took, took a few minutes to, to do. So once you get that, uh, get <coughs> oriented around that, it's, it's, it's very quick and easy. And Time saving and plus there, there's, uh, you can actually, the EDU version of Symbaloo, like uh, these two discovered, has a lot of um, web mixes that are um, incredibly rich with tools and resources that have been developed by teachers uh, and by other uh, types of educators. Yes? Two sh um, quick questions. Are those um, tiles, let's say for Skype, are they already there or? No, they're not. Okay, so it's you can bring them in. And is this open source? Yes, it is. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so you customize it. Yes. I can't read the smaller type, but it looks to me like all of your um, tiles represent tools. That's right. So is it right to say this is never organized by content, but you, rather by tool? You can do both. Okay. 
actually. So it's to your preference, to who you are, what speaks to you. Let's see what Mary, Mary Beth, Moira did. Okay. <laughs> so Mary Beth, Moira. You said, you said everything she's going to say. Yeah, pretty much. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> <Sorry, Beth. laughs> Perfect. So thank you, Flavia. Uh, my name is Mary Beth. I'm a first year master's student in um, applied linguistics, and I was part of Tim's class this semester. So it's been a big learning experience for myself, learning about personal learning environments. Um, like Tim and Flavia, it was my first time using them, my first time getting involved with them. And so what I'd like to do is just talk about my experience with them and then show you my own symbol, um, which really is horrible compared to <coughs> seven students, but what are you going to do, right? <laughs> so when Flavia came to our class, um, she did the presentation, we watched the video similar to you th today, and at first I was very oh man, another thing I have to learn, like another piece of technology I have to get into, but at the same time I was really curious about it because I'm one of those people who, if I'm doing research, if I'm writing a paper, I have 10,000 bookmarks on my computer and then I have to print out 15 articles and then I can't find them and then I just get angry and write my paper with three sources and then get a B, you know? So I was like, you know what, not really, but I didn't want that to happen, okay? So I looked into the PLE and Tim gave us the option of either doing an annotated bibliography or of creating our own symbol, which would reflect the research that we were doing in that class. And I thought, hey, that's great, two birds with one stone. I can learn something new and I can do an assignment. That's fantastic. And you know I spend enough time on the computer anyway. Not that I procrastinate on Facebook, Tim, but yeah, I do. <laughs> so um, I would like to take you into my PLE. Again, I'm not a grade seven student. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, yeah, this is it here. So this is my PLE. It's still in development now. Um, what I wanted to focus on in the Seminar for University teaching class was community service learning in higher education. Um, as part of my coursework this semester, I was observing an English for Academic Purposes class here at Carleton, and part of their coursework this term was going out to the community, getting involved, and seeing how what they did in the community related back to what they were studying in the classroom. And this was what they were doing. They were doing community service learning. So, looking around, like someone mentioned, you can color code things, so it helps you really organize things. And that's what I really like, because like Flavia, I'm a visual learner. If I can't see it, I don't get it. You know, so anything that I can do to make it a picture will help me so much. Um, so over here in the red, this is all Carleton stuff, directly from Carleton websites as well as the Journal of EAP, everything that's theoretically related to EAP, English for Academic Purposes. So that helped me to know, okay, if I need theory, I can go there, that's fine. Um, then over here, the icons, what I really liked about this is that you can choose the picture that you can put on your tile. So the pictures to me, I know exactly what they mean. You're looking at my symbol for the first time, so you might say, Mary Beth, why are there locks on your tiles? Like, what are you doing? I put these ones here because then I know that these are articles that I can only access if I use my Carleton ID through the library. So I know that if I'm on a Carleton, if I'm on a Carleton computer, I can just click on that, it'll open automatically. But if I'm at home, I have to kind of log in and do all that stuff. So it's just a reminder to me. Uh, down in the green, this is more help for like dictionaries and corpus and stuff like that. I don't know how to classify that, but I know that it's green. <laughs> okay, and then up here, these are some um, open access articles that anyone can access from any computer at any time. Again, regarding CSL, community service learning. So my, the beginnings of my PLE, my Symbolu, are pretty basic compared to the grade seven students, but I'm getting there, I'm working on it, okay? Um, right in the center, I like this, we have Google. I don't have to flip back and forth between Google and my Symbolu. I can just type it into Google and then it comes up like a normal Google page and I can click back and I'm back in my Symbolu. So that's really easy for organization for me. Um, what I didn't realize until our conversation last week <laughs> was, and then I felt really stupid for not realizing it yet, but up here, Okay, there's two types of Symbolus. There's just the regular Symbolu, and then there's Symbolu EDU, which is for educational purposes. And what this Symbolu allows you to do, this comes with a whole bunch of different web mixes. And a web mix is just your tile right here. Okay, these are all different web mixes. When you first sign in to your, when you first sign up for your Symbolu EDU account, there are several web mixes available to you, and then a blank one. And I can add as many as I want. So I could do CSL, I could look at different aspects of CSL, like CSL theory, and then I could make a new tab, CSL overseas, and then another one, CSL in Canada, whatever I wanted. I can do whatever I want, which is great, because it helps me manage my learning. So 
<laughs> I discovered these tabs last week. <laughs> so since then, I've been playing with them a little bit. And so I developed this web mix. It's still pretty small. Oh, oh, that's not it. Did it sign? No. Sorry. Where did I go? Yeah, that's Edu Tools. This isn't yours, Mara, right? Uh, what's your <laughs> What are the tabs? No, it's not. You have EDU teachers and stuff. Sorry, let me just try this one more time. <laughs> okay. I created a new web mix here called Developing EAP because that's something that I'm interested in. So then I found a lot of activities, the pink ones with the textbooks, because that, to me that means developing materials, developing courses for students. Um, that's how I classified that, and this is all to create materials, create activities based on academic language that students need in EAP classes. Um, some of the ones down here, writing, reading, grammar, and spelling, these were already there, those tiles were already in place when I created this one. So if I click on one of those, it'll take me directly to some of Symbaloo's tiles. For example, we have writing. I just click on that and it's there's a lot of information already there for me. So this is great. Instead of going to Google and being like, academic writing, how do I teach it? I can just click on this and it's like, there's a whole bunch of information. So at the same time, this is wonderful, but I felt a little bit overwhelmed because there's so much information. So you just, you need time to process it. And that's doable. Sorry, in your setup, yes. um, is it sort of one tile, one article, or is it... Yeah, that's exactly it. So I'll bring you back to the original one, CSL and EAP. So for example, this article up here, it's written by Miner. It's called Using CSL. If I just click on this, then it opens up a new window, and there's the article. So I don't have to copy, paste, find it in my bookmarks, all that stuff. I can just, boom, there it is. But a tile can open up a bunch of other tiles. A tile can open up a bunch of other tiles, but my tiles don't. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Not there. <laughs> I don't open it. I think I can get too. When I first opened Simple, I was like, I was a tile, take me down the whole set of tiles, take me down the whole set of tiles, and I thought, this is it. And I found it overwhelming as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, and then once you realize that there's all these available web mixes that Symbolu EDU already provides, whoa. <laughs> okay. Over here, these are a few other ones. The white ones were the ones that were already provided by Symbolu. And then I added Tesla Ontario because that's an organization that I'm part of and would like to learn more about. So I can use iTunes U to look for stuff to use in my classroom or the learning network or anything like that. Then I added another web mix because I was getting really good at it. I was kind of excited. <laughs> okay. So I added this web mix with my RSS feeds. And these feeds are ones I go to websites that I often go to to learn about what's coming up and what has developed recently. And I can copy their RSS feed link and I can post it into my symbol room, and it's there, no problem. So I have linguist lists, I have the modern language journal, I have um, some other things that are really interesting. Linguistics for dummies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, things like that. So it's really easy. Quickly, I'd like just to show you how I can insert a tile, just so you understand it is really simple. Um, I've, again, this was my first time using it, so I was kind of like, I hope it's not really hard. It's so simple, it's fantastic. Okay? So, here you have your symbol. Sorry if you can't really see. <laughs> okay? All you do is click on a tile, and you can see it says add new tile. Click on that. Click here to create your own tile, or make a new web mix. So if you want to make a new web mix, that's a whole nother tab. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to click to create my own tile. I add the address of the website. Mm, I like this video. Yeah, yeah. OK. So I have the website copied. I paste the website there. It verifies the address and says, hey, you can copy and paste. Good job. And I say right on. And it automatically creates the title for it if that website has a title. But maybe I don't remember what that's actually titled and I know what I want to call it. So I'll change the title and I will say 
Flavia's cool video. Because that's how I remember it, and that's not how you spell Flavia. <coughs> Is that how you spell Flavia? F L A V I A? Right on. Okay? And then if I want, right here it says display the name on the, on the tile. For me, that's big because I like the picture, but I also want to know what I'm looking at, so I'm going to click yes. The color of my text is going to be white because my tile is going to be pink. <laughs> Why not? I can design my own color right there. And then if I want to add an icon, I have this selection button right here and I have 10 pages of different icons I can use. So whatever works best for me, I can flip through them. There's some in color, there's some in black and white, there's blue ones if you like blue. You know. I have a question. Yes, I hope we have an answer. <coughs> I'm sure you would. Can you please clarify what's a web mix? Yes, absolutely. I will in one second. I'll just add my picture and then we'll go back and I'll show you exactly what it is. Uh, I'm looking for something that looks like a video. Mm. A film reel. Oh, there's a camera. Oh, there we go. Boom, video. Okay. And I'm done. So I just add my tile to web, my web mix and I say, yeah, sure, go ahead. And then I have it right up here in the corner. And I just click on it, drag it, put it wherever I want it. Boom. Done. And if I want to see the video, click on the video. And if everything goes well, it opens. And there's Flavia's cool video. Welcome to my okay. personal life. Whatever. My web mix is better than hers. <laughs> Not really. So just to clarify what a web mix is, okay, you have all these different tabs up here. I've named mine CSL and EAP, Developing EAP, and RSS feeds. Each one of those tabs is considered a web mix. Okay, so I can choose to share just this web mix, or I can share all three of them, or I can... And I, in addition, I can also choose who I, ch uh, who I share it with. Like, right now I think only Tim can see mine, because... I'm not confident enough to share it with the world yet. <laughs> yes. Can you upload your own file? Yes. Can you make connections uh, to content on the internet or also you can upload the file? Do you know? No, because I've never tried either. I don't know use it. It looks like just a visual representation of your favorites. Yeah. Uh, but as a personal space, can I upload my PowerPoint, my Word document? That's my you yeah. The girl had her class project. Those are Google Docs. Yeah, those are Google Docs. So everything is open in the cloud. Yeah, it has to be cloud. But isn't everything supposed to be? Everything she had there is her internet. That's a great question. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really, I'm not positive on the answer. But. It seemed only to give you a space for a URL. Mm -hmm. It was like drop down your crowd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go to add tile, create your own tile. Like where it says website? Oh. Right there. Load. News source, radio station, or embedded. Yeah. So. so. Oh, yeah, it'll open it right away in your own PLE. So I'll check that out. And when Flavia shares the slides, we can put a little note in there about how to do that. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a great plan. Cool. So before Moira presents, does anyone have any further questions for Moira? Yeah. Yes. Who have you run off those types? Uh, I mean, the, the space for the types. Where have so I? You just create a, another layer. Of so, well, I mean, there are a limited number of spots, right? Again. Yeah, there are a limited number of spots, and I haven't filled them yet, but I'm working on it. Okay. Um, and then once you fill it, if, if you still continue on the same topic and you want to develop another web mix, uh, you can just... You can make that page bigger. This page? My PLE page? Mm -hmm. Moira, how? Teach me. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know if I can remember, but you can expand it to the right and left and down. Okay, well, maybe Moira will play with it and she'll show you. But if you want to add another web mix, it's really simple. You just go to the end of all the web mixes that they've implemented for you, and then there's a little plus sign. It's just like opening a new tab in your browser, and then clicking on it, and you have a new web mix. <coughs> and then you're just you're free to start it. For sharing? Yes. If one has a class list, yes. and they all have web CD addresses, yep. do I need to know their an email address for them, just class name to number? Class? Yeah, definitely. So if you want to share your web mix, You'll see in the where it says sign out, right underneath there's a button that says share. Not a problem at all. So you can name your web mix for everyone to see. 
And then you can describe it. Mine just says what CSL is and what EAP is. It's pretty short. Related words, mine would be CSL, EAP, I think that's it. And then you can choose to share publicly, publicly sorry, or privately with just friends. And so I've only shared mine with Tim so far and another student who is using mine as reference. So if you click privately, then you can copy the link, your PLE, PLE link in there, and then uh, you can share via email. And you just put all your friends' emails in or your students' emails in that you want to have access to this, and then it's shared. Did you say you, I have to be on your list in order to access your reference? Yes. But I'm looking at it right now. Perfect. <laughs> oh. So I didn't do it right. <laughs> My privacy settings aren't right. It's a learning curve. <laughs> Some of those videos better come down. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Learning curve for everyone. So my webmix is free and available for everyone to look at. You go on Symbolu Edu, type in CSL and EAP. That's mine. Yes. Um, how did you find it deciding which are those tabs, which tab certain things go on? Like, did you find that certain tiles get repeated if they belong to different categories? Um, yes, and that's definitely up to the individual student. Because if I think it fits into those three categories that I have, I, I'll put it in all three. Um, and for me, again, that's where the color coding comes in help. Because I'm like, I know that that's theory, so why do I have so much green? <laughs> like, green should all be in one spot. Um, or red, sorry. And then, in addition, when you create a Symbolu EDU account, there are pre-made uh, web mixes for you. And that's where Moira is going to step in, and she will discuss some EDU tools. This is one of the tabs that's pre-created on Symbolu EDU for you. Um, there's a lot of great things on there that I just didn't have time to go through. But Moira, she did. Thank you. That's all right there. And this is called which tab it should be there. Yeah. And those tools are amazing. Can we just log out of here again? No, your tab is open. It's oh, my tab is open? Yeah. There, is that? It's the one beside me. That one's yours. Oh, okay. You're up there. Yeah. Right? I guess. Is that you? Um, what's it got in there? Just move over. Go to the beginning oh, of here. Oh, I can't even read so that. Here. Here. Go here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Again. On the arrow. What arrow? EDU teachers? Is that your web mix? Yeah, but if I could read the names of the others, I'd be pretty sure. Ours is Okay, this is mine. Sign out. Oh, it's this one. That's right there. Yeah. So maybe we can't both be logged in at the same time? You know. Yeah, I think okay. you have to use two different browsers. Okay, what is it? What I get is a piece of You can do it. No, I can't. I can't. Dance. Oh, I got the beautiful neck. Uh, do you want the EDU tools? Yeah, I know where that is. I just wanted to see what I had in here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking the pretty pictures too. Okay. You can create wonderful background pictures if you like, yeah. like Moira has. Yeah, because it comes with that, but it's so long since I've done it. It's in the setup, but you can expand. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the beginning. I do teach you. Okay. Oh, 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 okay.
Okay. okay. Um, my name's Moira, and I'm one of the students in the seminar from university teaching. Um, I also work here. I'm an applications programmer, but I'm not a digital native, and all of this stuff is completely new to me. It's a world away from learning COBOL on a stack of cards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I learned on a stack of cards. <laughs> it means I'm really old. <laughs> okay, so this uh, web mix here is one of the pre-made web mixes that comes with Symbolu Edu, and it has links to a lot of education-related tools. Um, this particular one here, Collaborize Classroom is a synchronous discussion tool that is used for classrooms. Uh, you can get it for free or you can get it um, through a school board uh, to use for uh, students in classes. So there's a whole range of things. There's a lot of things on here that are for um, elementary through K-12, but there are also a lot of things that apply to university settings too. And this particular tool, um, this particular widget here takes you to the top edu tools, and this particular website, um, well, it takes takes you to another um, web mix called edu tools, and it contains even more uh, tools on it here. This is not the one that came with it, though. This is one it creates when you hit that link. If you go back over to the beginning. This is the original one that comes with it, and it has even more on there. Uh, there's Digo for bookmarking, there's uh, associations for um, computers and, and education, uh, there's another tool called VoiceThread there, and there's the Evernote, which is the one that that student was using to put all her notes in. And then there's Moodle, which we will be getting here at Carleton in the fall. and the one that I'm interested in right now is Live Binders. And this is like another bookmarking system. And it can be used for e-portfolios. And I have discovered that a lot of teachers have made use of this. And there's a lot of information in different binders relating to education. And if you're interested in a particular topic, now where the heck is it on here? Um, where's the search? I guess I have to sign in. No, I should be able to search. Featured. So these are some binders that relate to education. Oh, here it is. Search for other edu subjects. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. problem-based learning, there are a whole bunch of binders that are related to problem-based learning, and project-based learning, there are different names for it. So are these resources? That are these are resources that different teachers uh, have put together, and if we look at one of them, this one has a few tabs on it, definition of problem-based learning. Um, and you can make sub-tabs. Now, I haven't done this yet. I'm just starting out making it. I've used it for research purposes, but I haven't actually made an e-portfolio in here yet, so I'm still learning how to do that. So there, when you make a tab, you can make sub-tabs. 
and there was another one here. This might not be the one that I was looking at before. So we are particularly interested in this for doing e-portfolios for teaching and learning. So how could professors and students share their own teaching portfolios? Because the Symbaloo didn't seem to do that. The Vive Finder is a place to do that. And of course, it's a possible repository for students' work. So how are you submitting your work this year? This is my So Vive Finder offers that opportunity. Not to mention the fact that I think it also is a repository for sharing teaching materials and learning objects apart from things like Merlot and other sorts of learning object repositories. Basically, this becomes a repository for whole binders of materials. And so that as people use this more and more, it may be that you can go and find someone's whole course and be able to share that. Question. Will you share information, I mean, about share, uh, through, I mean, through uh, defining the uh, concept and approach. Is there any issue uh, related to copyright? There's always copyright. So how do we go up about your go around? If you're using things that you don't own the copyright to, you'd have to have permission. From the students. From the students or from right. the authors, yes. That's well, something from, the, uh, from YouTube, no. No, as long as the link is there to the original mm -hmm. source. Okay. I think as long as you're linking to the original source, I guess we have two librarians in the room here helping some of issues. But yeah, our copyright looms large in all of our use of technology that way. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to depend on you know, proper citation and appropriate requests for use. Yeah. And, and so it's doable. students as well. Oh, it's doable. Yeah, yeah. great. Thanks. Yeah. And I think more and more we might learn that well, we want students to sign a document off at the very beginning uh, to say that I acknowledge that I'll be sharing my materials for this course. So much. But I guess you know the power of this for me as an instructor is to imagine the world where after four years someone has a space which holds all of their learning and, and it's organized in the way they think of it. And if you sat with a student, you get insight into their own metacognition into the discipline. You know, how might you organize things like this? And you get to see how they're thinking. And likewise, you can see how that maps on to other people's thinking. And I'll bet you, you could start to do research to see how that changes over time. So there's so much potential here, and we just scratched the surface, and there's that excitement that I thought I wanted to share today with one of my colleagues, is that uh, when Flavi presented this, and then Patrick asked if we would do a presentation, I said, I know what we want to share, because this is a bleeding edge of what we're trying. Uh, so you can see that we're all, you know, pretty struggling with it, but at the same time, we think that this is something very powerful for creating a space for students to use it as a tool for learning, as Mary Beth was talking about, and as we get the live binders, to start to document our learning. Yeah, I think you'll find that most of the things that are in the binders relating to education, uh, people have pulled from the web, and the URL is here. Mm -hmm. um, so nice. most of the stuff is accessible. Um, the, the one that I found originally, and I don't see it there now, it had information from a problem-based learning organization. It had um, information from a journal called the International Journal of Problem-Based Learning, which I didn't know existed. It's an open source document, so you can also get at it through DOAT. Um, so I did a lot of the research here, and then when I finished with that, then I went to Eric and did the tedious search through Eric, but this was a lot more easier to go through tab-based than doing the scan down pages and pages from Eric. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Flavia, it is after one, so we'll probably want to make a transition in terms of people who may have to leave, other people who want to stay, maybe you can make some closing comments. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to wrap it up. Thank you, Mary. Um, so the PowerPoint will be available to you. There's a lot more information on it about maybe um, institutional PLEs, how how do we go about uh, sort of creating a philosophy, a PLE philosophy within an institution? There um, is a working paper that um, we're working on that should, should be available in June. So if you're interested in the big picture, this is just an example. Symbolu is just an example, a case, a case study of one tool, one PLE tool, one PLE environment, but there are many out there. Um, most of the research being done is in Europe. 
um, and uh, in the UK. Uh, so they're, they're actually actively working in creating these institutional sort of spaces for students to integrate both um, uh, informal and formal le uh, learning. And like Tim mentioned, this, this thing of being able to take this information and leave the institution and transition into the workplace with um, the, the, this information, these tools, this knowledge that, that the student has amassed is, is pretty powerful. And in addition to that, it allows um, students to be aware of their learning, that sort of metacognitive um, aspect of learning, which isn't discussed a lot in, in higher education. We don't take the time to, to talk to the students about thinking about their own learning or thinking about thinking. And I think that will help them with the lifelong learning skills later on. So we're really excited. For it's a backdoor to learning style that I just kind of talked about earlier that you know, when people sit down and start to compare theirs or they're making a class presentation, approaches to understanding and ways of seeing things in perspective will become so obvious, it's become so visual, and it's a doorway to be able to talk about how you're construing the discipline, the specific knowledge, the resources that are there. So I think it opens up new conversations as well. And I'd like to thank um, both Mary Beth and Maura for giving us sort of insight into, as a student, how this environment sort of how, how they, they their, their struggles and their their successes with this particular and environment where we didn't give as much time to yeah. really fill the hole for us in the class by coming up with live binders and saying i saw found a solution to a problem we're having in our class which is how do we put up a portfolio in a secure sort of way and and be able to bring a collection of materials to it so thanks for that so thank you very much for coming There's one more, uh, and for all of our PLE presenters, thank you ever so much for coming, and thank you all for coming for this, uh, this round table as well. Uh, thank you. announcement uh, about June? Yes, there's, uh, on June 13th, we have our annual teaching and learning symposium. Uh, it'll be sort of a full day of presentations. Uh, there will be a uh, keynote as well as a fellow named Eric Mazur, who's instructor, uh, physics instructor down at Harvard. Uh, he's fairly famous for uh, some of the different things he does in class, mostly student response systems. So he'll be uh, presenting as well as he'll be a number of other sessions that will be coming. So I'll be on June 13th. Uh, we'll be very vocal about it. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled on this semester. Thanks. Okay. Great. Thank you.